presentations here in time. Uh, how many of you actually have heard of MapLibre? Okay, I'm done here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so very briefly, what is MapLibre? MapLibre is a mapping library, or actually a set of libraries related to visualizing maps. It's an open source community project. And it all started with Mapbox. We love Mapbox. We do. And it all started because of Mapbox creating an amazing project. It's freely licensed, uh, BSD licensed. And it's developed by contributors, just like yourself, open source contributors, and companies. So the history, part one. I'm not sure about the second one. Part one is here. License is everything. One day, we woke up to find out that Mapbox was changing its license and adding a few lines here and there. Happens. Jimmy, who did you hear from here? You honestly, I cannot blame Mapbox. I honestly cannot. I, I understand the reasoning. There is very significant financial reasons to do what, what Mapbox did. did. I am very grateful to Mapbox for doing what they did and dedicating all their work, initial work, version one work, to open source. So I posted a little tweet, a little tweet that could, uh, saying that this is wonderful, but it's time to fork. It's time in every project when it's grown up to be forked. Um, Eric, who some of you may know, used to be, I believe, the, uh, the CEO of Mapbox, um, and still uh, is at the key position in Mapbox, replied almost right away, saying that the project still welcomes contributors and is still open to the world, at least the source code is, but not under the same license anymore. To which I replied again, thank you, but we have to move. Unfortunately, we cannot work with a non-open source code. So then Peter, who again, some of you may know, the CEO of Matt Tyler, another wonderful company. We have a technical difficulty. I know they can hear you. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you. Is this better? Well, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Hey, um, okay. Must step back. Um, so Peter, who some of you may know, um, think me about it and says, let's get together. That was a good tweet. Time to really organize. And uh, him and a number of other people replied, and we got together, and that's how MapLibre was born. So the first meeting summary was, let's work on this together. Let's settle on a name. And uh, we need more people. So where are we now? The main two components of the project are the MapLibre GLGS, technically should now be called GLTS, and the other project called MapLibre GL Native. One is targeting iOS, Android, and other mobile platforms. The other is targeting the web. Uh, the web, I have some statistics for. We're getting over 33,000 downloads per week. And I would say it's a quite successful project for one year's worth of uh, work. There's quite a few other projects. There's navigational components, there is uh, uh, integration, leaflet, and other components. All of these communities happily working on. Some companies actually adopted some of these projects and very actively working on them. And we're welcoming more companies to join this work. Uh, especially because we are very liberal in terms of giving out permissions. If you want to really take the ownership of something, just please do. We don't want to be the gatekeepers. We want community to collaborate as much as possible. Governance. We have a governing board. It, it's an interim governing board until the project has more footing. We were just The first people who got there got the governing board positions, essentially, the ones who were first organized. But as time goes on, we should get the governing board to be the people who are active in the project. And then there's a steering, technical steering committee. That's the much more open and, uh, uh, again, welcoming uh, 
organization that uh, anyone can participate in to discuss where we're moving forward, uh, in which direction and what technical decisions we should make. Governing board will be re-elected. It is an elected system. Uh, we're planning to do it by the next force for G. Community. We have over 80 code contributors by now. Hobby professional. Uh, um, all of them did this amazing map kind of showing where the contributors are. Changing it bigly. <laughs> it's a fun one. Um, first major, major patch was TypeScript. We just took all of that GLGS code and made it in GLTS. It was only 577 files changed in one pull request. <laughs> it's okay, right? Um, close to 30,000 edit lines, close to 20, 000, over 22,000 removed. Uh, it was quite a bit of a discussion, as you can imagine, 460 comments in poor GitHub. I can kind of feel sorry for them. We did remove Internet Explorer support. I know some of you still kind of miss it, but I know. we had to. Jest, we migrated to Jest. It's a proper system rather than the old one that was used there that should not be named. 3D, that's the one currently in pipeline. This is where we, this pull request is has been undergoing reviews for the past few months, I believe, actively reviewed, and this is what we're hope, hoping to merge soon. It's kind of nice, I think. Um, it's you know the first big chunk of code that is completely not map boxes. It's you know converting to TypeScript is semi automated. Writing fun code like this is. More difficult. All right. I'll let it finish then. Almost there. OK, we're done. Um, re releases and roadmaps. So as you can see, we have uh, the 3D roadmap at sometime mid-2022. Um, all this data is public. Uh, there's a link, roadmap, maplibre.org. I mean, most of this information is on maplibre.org. Has it been observed in the wild? Yes, it has. Elastic, for which I work, um, is actively using Maplibre. Uh, for like both of these visualizations are done here using Maplibre. Uh, we're migrating currently to the version two. Um, this is the 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 eruption in uh, Cumbria. Yeah, I'm probably mispronouncing it. But uh, so you can uh, do use elastic search to analyze all the data related to that eruption and plot it in the map like that. And it's all map library. Uh, another one is using um, all of the state of the map, uh, so sorry, not state of the map, open street map data ingested into elastic and again visualizing uh, map library plus all the buildings via elastic search. Or doing things like, uh, you know, playing with hex tiles. Uh, those are fun. And actually, it's H3, uh, Uber, or, uh, originally from Uber uh, Technology and Elasticsearch is integrating that in version 8.1. Moving on. There we go. Um, other interesting observations in the wild. This is the native portion, not the GLG, the GSGS, but uh, the native component. Uh, 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 Tadej Novak, one of the contributors of the uh, native side of things, has implemented this nice map with a weather map uh, application. Um, I'm having trouble going to the next page with videos. Bear with me. <coughs> Aspirations, what are, what, what are we planning next? So this is the roadmap, as approximate roadmap. Um, some of these items have already been checked off. 3D map is next on the agenda. Um, we do want closer integration with leaflet, open layers. Uh, possible targets are custom, uh, various other coordinate systems. Web Mercator is fun, but you know it does disturb things a bit. Um, single code base. This is something I've been promoting. Again, it's a very much of a stretch goal, but we have two systems. We have the one written in JavaScript slash TypeScript, and another one written in C++. 
And maintaining two code bases that do the same thing, as some of you know, is not very efficient, especially when you have a community project. So maybe Rust and compile it to web assemblies and uh, to na native libraries as one of the ideas. Um, so and plus whatever other ideas you're interested. So my personal big aspirations are get full full time staff working on the project uh, because wonderful hero contributions from individuals is wonderful, but then the life kind of their job takes most of their time or other things happen, so we want continuity. So I'm, uh, I'm actively soliciting funds for hiring full-time staff to man the project. And then there's a big problem of outsmarting flat earthers. Uh, I mean, you know how Google, for example, when you zoom out, you see a globe rather than flat. So that's, I, I think we can probably do something like that. One must to rule them, them all. And the multilingual support, uh, that's something that I don't think Mapbox have, has ever addressed. It does not do complex ligatures. It does not do complex fonts for languages that are not, where each character is not by itself. The moment you want to connect characters in various ways, you need much smarter uh, software. So I'm hoping that someday we'll have to support for that. So go to maplibre.org or ask me questions now or later. No. Now is fine. Thank you.